According to the comment section of the last episode, that video was highlighted by two things. No, not the free agent signings to the draft that we had. They were highlighted by me not signing Leo Komarov and missing the fact that one Alex Ovechkin put up 78 goals, which admittedly I managed to miss because I get tunnel vision on our team and our team only and often don't care. But yeah, 78 goals for Ovi at 36. Absolutely ridiculous. Now, will we sign Leo Komarov in this episode or will it be another running joke like Chris Gibson time? Can only tell. We do have a draft to get to before we get to free agency, though. So let's get down to business. No assumptions over who we are drafting, because much like we learned with the Hughes and Kako draft, there is no reason to make assumptions. This game will make you look foolish every time. As Matthew Savoy ends up going to the Toronto Maple Leafs, Persaud is off the board, which means we are guaranteed one of our two fins who will it be? It will not be Kamel. It will be Brad Lambert. That is confirmed. Now, in terms of who we could select, it's confirmed. There is still the option of potentially making something happen via trade, although that's a terrible goddamn idea. The one question really is whether or not we want to trade up, because of course we do have the extra picks there we go they're way down there but they're there we have those extra picks we might be able to make something happen let's get this out of the way brad lambert again uh, partially you know, half canadian partially canadian he's partially canadian but technically represents finland and for that reason brad lambert welcome aboard he is actually the same overall as Kamel's. So they both developed to a similar rate Right now, 90 offensive awareness already for Lambert, which is ridiculous. Kamel set up as more of a sniper. I mean, really, in fairness, uh, slight differences. Kamel a little bit more physical, a little bit better defensively. Lambert a bit better with the puck. Couldn't really go wrong with either option. The big question that we have to answer now is whether or not there is anybody else on this list here in the first round before our next pick comes up that we want to draft. And Marku Swaminen would be the first option, and it's a medium four, but still, I would say he's worth selecting. Beggars can't really be choosers. There's also UC Kiprasov, B's and C's, but a medium elite Huberdo comparison. And from there, that was it, right? Yeah, it was just those two. So the option is there, and of course there are some options in the second round as well, at least one. The option is there to either shop these picks, depending on the value, which again is not going to be that high, or we just try to trade up and make those selections, and let's be honest, we're going to try to trade up to make those picks. We do have an extra second round and third round pick as well, so we should be able to get this to work out for us. The question is, the question is, where do we look to trade up? It was 18th, wasn't it? Or was it 28th? 20, yeah, it was 18th, okay. 22nd in total. I'm a little bit worried about someone going off the board and taking him, so let's try to trade up here. Nashville, are you interested? You are not, because of course you're not. That would be far too easy. St. Louis or San Jose? Oh boy. Are the Sharks interested? I don't think so, to be honest. They're interested in moving their later picks. Yikes. This could be rough, actually. Let's look at Anaheim and the Leafs and the Avs if we need to. Anaheim, there we go. I'm going to have to trade up a little bit further than I'd like to, but we'll still make it work. We'll see if we can move that Arizona pick. And then as far as who else we have to trade, I mean, we really don't have anybody, <laughs> if you think about it. We don't really have anybody that we can look to move, unfortunately. So the team is pretty much set. Again, we were allowed to move a certain Pecorine there, but the value, of course, just isn't going to be there. Koivu, of course, was also movable heading into this past year. So again, uh, just to recap, actually, since I'm looking at it, Risto, we have for at least one more year. Nudivara, we have for three years, and then Ranta is untradeable. We'll see what the situation is as far as uh, how everything plays out with free agency. Now, here's, here's the thing. We have a medium starter goaltender here. 
who just flat out is not going to develop. And that's always a topic of discussion. Whether or not I'm allowed to trade somebody who I know isn't going to develop, but the game is not smart enough to recognize that they're not going to develop. It's, it is cheap to trade a goaltender like that. They always maintain high value, even if they're just terrible. <laughs> and he is, make no mistake about it. But aside from that, I don't really know. I think we would have to use that extra third round pick, which I'm not totally against. We can send, we can send that Leafs third over in the deal. I don't know if that'll go through, though, to be honest. I'm going to check. I'd be okay if that goes through. It does not, which isn't surprising. How much more would I have to add, though? We also have that extra fifth round pick from the Leafs. Is that enough? Still no. Right. And this is where it gets to be a bit of a struggle between, ah, you can just be cheap or you try like hell to work out a deal and it often doesn't go through. A constant struggle. What else could I possibly do here? Oh boy, oh boy. We have our two medium fringes. I'd probably rather stick with Makaniemi more than likely, but I might have to trade Puka here. I don't really think I have a choice if I want to be able to move up to make both picks. What about that sixth rounder as well? Anaheim, how are we feeling? Are we any closer to a deal? No, we're not. I mean, I'm trying here, right? Maybe not trying as much as I should be. <laughs> Maybe being a little bit too stingy. How close is this particular attempt? Still quite far off. I disagree with that. I wholeheartedly disagree. I feel like this game is being a little bit unfair. I feel like we're doing okay in terms of offering a somewhat fair deal. But apparently not. There's really nobody else to move on from here. <sighs> All right. Take the fourth as well. Let's be honest, we'll probably trade down later. They should take this. Thank you. All right, so we had to give up a lot to make that happen. So make no mistake, make no mistake, I am absolutely going to be moving that goaltender to try and move up again. It's just a matter of what team we're going to be able to work out a deal with here. Carolina or Pittsburgh next. Carolina, you're killing me. Bunch of jerks some might say, for Pittsburgh. Do you want to move that pick? God damn. This is, this is difficult. This is proven to be just a little bit difficult. New Jersey or Montreal? New Jersey. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Again, you get the 31st pick. That's all well and good. And I'm going to send you that goalie who is not going to develop. And I'll throw in, I won't make up the difference. That'll be my way of being like, okay, yeah, I'm giving up this asset, but you know what? I got to make myself feel better about this. I don't want to completely rip off the AI. I'm going to also throw in that sixth. So I know that's not much, but with the amount of low elites you normally find towards the end of a draft, we are very very clearly missing out on value there, even though, again, Puka's value is, isn't real, or at least it shouldn't be. So there you go, New Jersey. Enjoy that deal. Thank you for letting us move up. And I think we should be good. So let's go ahead and move up to that next pick. Jesus, the quality of this draft has not dropped off at all. Oh my god, of course there is a mix still of real-world players and computer-generated, but still... We will absolutely... Oh, God. When did I get that pick? 21. <sighs> I don't think that's going to be good enough to get both. Unless somebody messes up, they're not going to be there. Do I take the medium elite? Or do I take... The... I have to take the medium elite. We need that defenseman. And he's looking pretty good. But... Unless I can swing a deal here, like with a Nashville, they don't want to trade that pick. There's no way. So I'm at this game's mercy right now. Of course, we're still building up this team in general. I can't turn down... Why the hell did it do that? I can't turn down a medium elite. I just can't. 
I really want that defenseman, and hopefully with our scout ranking him as the 22nd rated player, he is still available. We're going to be taking Yussi Kippersoff here. Can't turn down that kind of value of a medium elite. So Kipper, welcome aboard. He's only a 65, but it's a trade value that matters, and he might still develop. The big question is whether or not our defenseman falls all the way down to 21st. Oh boy. The Islanders, are you going to screw me over? Yes, you are. 76. Now here's the thing. Technically, they might want to move him. And if they do, that's our opening. And otherwise, we look to trade the pick and get back whatever we can. So is that defenseman on the board? They don't want to trade him. Damn it. That'll be, uh, that'll be an interesting topic of discussion, whether or not I made the right choice there. I feel like I did. It just sucks that we couldn't get both of them, but with teams not wanting to trade the picks, what else was I supposed to do? The value on hard, di on of course, on hard trade difficulty, when teams don't want to trade uh, anything, whether it be a player or a pick, if they don't want to move that, it's such a pain, and you have to overspend like a madman. Cedar is a uh, German, but Flicola, no, thank you. So the big question here is: there anybody on the block? that would benefit us. If not, we trade down for picks next year. And I almost, well, yeah, Philpula is not that great, though. Is there anybody here that can help us? Now, again, I'm not resigned to having to trade for players that are on the block, but that would help us save just a little bit. I wish Holtz wasn't Swedish. <laughs> I really do. Ericsson's a low six, not really feeling that. Medium Elite Verana, Kim and Gonchar, they're not going to help. Zuccarello is not going to help us. Kyle Turris, Keith Yandel, and Charlie Coyle aren't going to help. Eunice Brodeen. Granlund. I wish. Pretty sure the value is not going to work out on that. Victor Rask is available, but let's be honest, I'd probably... Well, no, I should, should. He's Swedish. I forgot that he was Swedish. I'll flat out admit that. I forgot that he was Swedish. Right. Well then. Well then. Oh, nobody on Nashville. I, I think we're uh, I think we're a little bit out of luck. Carter Hart will be on Philly's trade block, but I can't get a half decent Finn. Although, there we go. There we go. Ottawa. That's the way. Now the question is whether or not I'd rather trade for a first round pick next year or make that deal with the Sens. I think I'd rather make that deal with the Sens. I'm not going to look for a goaltender because we still have Ranta. In the meantime. I think we're going to make that deal with Ottawa. Sounds good to me. Hopefully that works for everybody else. Let's make a deal. Ottawa with Matty Kuka. Was a former first round pick. Definitely more of a defensive D-man. He is currently a defensive D-man as well. Let's see if we can work out a deal here, shall we, to pick up a defenseman that we need. Now those values are close. I might be able to tack on something else. I'm going to try a fourth and a sixth just to see how close we are. Rejected. What about just a fourth? Still rejected. All right. Hey, it's worth it's worth tweaking around here a little bit, tweaking some assets straight up. Ah, still quite really quite far off, huh? So we have two seconds, a third, and that seventh left. I'm going to use the seventh. Still rejected. Still quite far off. I disagree with that assessment. What about a fourth round pick next year as well? What do you think? There we go. I will take it. Matty Kuka. Welcome aboard. Just signed his ELC from the looks of it. Perfect timing. We don't end up trading down and we still end up getting a defensive addition to go alongside Lambert and Kippersoff. The big question now so whether or not we have to trade up to get these two guys at the start of the second round, that being well, the one, that being Tommy Tirvinen, the 18-year-old gem, solid grades as well, another Chara comparison. Of course, low elite is an overpowered potential this year. Sammy Pillman, or Pillman perhaps, not bad, but a Grabner comparison. He better have wheels for days and no hands. It's also Nermi later on as a low four. So we just need one pick at the start of the second round and we'll be okay. And ours is already right there. So let's go ahead and sim. Technically I could trade down a couple of spots if I wanted to. We are not going to risk it. Not a chance. Tommy Tirvinen. 
Let's do this. Welcome aboard. 70 overall. So two decent forwards, two decent defensemen added in this draft. Our next pick in the second round is way down the road. 31st. The penultimate pick of the round. Who is next is the question. Let's sort by potential for the first time. So does Juha Blomdahl and I can't trust that he's actually going to be that good. Next up is Sammy Peelman. And he might be the best player that's left. To be honest, he is yeah, the best player that's left. You have Tuomo Nermi and Petri Sarenheimo. But both being low four, I don't trust that potential. There's a medium nine in Patola or Peltola. I think, I think we're good with who we have. High fringe, but it's not confirmed. For Varakis. There's one player left I'm interested in selecting, and that's Peelman. He is projected to go 48th. So we will move down, hopefully, to Colorado or Detroit. Gonna have to bank on the Red Wings here, or or we can deal with menu lag. That's fine, thank you. I'm pretty sure they're gonna want to trade this pick, and they do. And beyond that, I think we're good to trade down next year. So we'll move that third round pick as well, which we might have to do just to get the deal done anyway. And we'll try to pick up... Wow, look at Detroit stacking picks for next year. Let's try to get a fourth and a fifth next year as well. So a second and a third for a second, a fourth and a fifth next year. They're probably winning on value in that, but I'm good to do the deal. And so are they. So let's move up. We will make this next selection and we are done for this year's draft. Peelman's not an amazing player, but it'll be decent value for a second round pick. So Sammy, a welcome aboard. 60 overall. He was 17 though, so he'll have time to develop. And we are done for this draft. And I gotta be honest, I'm feeling really good. There was one cheap trade there, I'd say. And even then I tried to make sure that it really didn't benefit me all that much. It certainly did, but not to a crazy extent. And we are good to move on to the re-sign phase. Holy scouts. Okay, let's get that out of the way first. First and foremost, especially our A-plus scout, Ethan Cogliano. Again, our scouting department is basically set. There's not a whole hell of a lot we have to do or worry about. It's just try like hell to keep everybody here and not worry about it until somebody retires, pretty much. So we'll get those done. I kind of wish there was an auto resign feature and it's just like, yeah, give them whatever money they need. But that is not the case. Again, with owner mode not being on, that explains the budget, of course. So as far as re-signing players, let's see what we're dealing with here. Another off season of setting up the roster. Capo Caco needs his first contract. Pecorine, yet again, a UFA. And yet again, we will be letting him go to explore our options. And Marcus Russo as well. He will be dropped to the free agent list. He might be back. But right now with Makanyemi, Justice Anuen, whose name I cannot pronounce, of course. And Peroinen, apparently. That's a, that's, a decent, that's a decent start. We'll see who's available to us. And then, of course, Loxo we won't be signing. Defensively... We absolutely need to sign Kervainen. I wanted to sign him last year, but it made sense to wait. So that's going to be a huge addition with him on his ELC. Loxanen has actually developed into high six. That's a rarity for medium six to high six for Oscari Loxanen, who is a Sabres prospect, isn't he? He is. So he will, he will absolutely be back. That's not even a question. Three-year deal. Let's be honest, I'm going to sign this anyway. The big debate, of course, is whether or not I should be doing, like, the, oh, no trade clause. Like, someone like him with that amount of money, that wouldn't be commanding a no trade clause, right? So, we're going to sign him, no problem. Uh, Money-wise, that's fine, and we'll look to bring Loxton and back. And Rupalavalainen, we might as well try to bring back as well. At least until we get a, uh, you know, the full scope of what the hell this team's going to be looking like, free agency-wise and everything. Uh, Thomas Reinen, Reinen, Renanen, he will be back as well. I'm going to go one year for him for now. Vietti Vainio, oh, that's a tough one because he's not going to get any better. He might, well, he might get a little bit better. I'm going to let him go for now. 
We'll see who's on the free agent list. We might have some decent options. You never know. Uh, Toscala, we absolutely have to sign. And from there, I think we're good. So again, someone like Vertanen, he doesn't have to be signed this year, right? But there is the debate, and I've never really, you know, I've never really committed to one side or the other, but some people believe that if you play someone of that overall, really up to, from like a 68 overall up in the AHL, that they develop a little bit better than they would being unsigned. I feel like that, you know, that sounds legit. I don't know if it's the truth. That's why I'm, you know, on occasion tempted to sign players like him. We'll hold off for now. Tiervinen as well will not be signed. The defense is looking pretty good regardless of what happens in free agency. Capocacco needs a contract. Right. How many years? Four. I'll tell you what. Do we want... I think we have no... Should the rule be no movement clauses for those who are out of RFA status? It probably should be, right? So... I think we're free and clear to sign him. He only wants 7.5, which is a steal. Like, I'm not even... Uh, I might still try to save a little bit of money. But I'm not even going to try, like, the full-on 85% trick to save money. 7 by 4 is an amazing contract for us. Armia. Yeah, well, Armia scored a hat trick the other day. I think we need to look to bring him back. And he's going to be one... Or it's going to be fairly interesting that he wants three years... Three years. I'm willing to do that, even if we end up with a no move, right? He wants three years. So what we are going to do, we are going to spin the wheel, and it will be, let's go, no commitment, one year, two year, three years, and again, we'll, uh, whoops, uh, we'll just auto-fill it out from there. Let's see. So Armia... If we sign him to the three-year deal that he wants, we have to stay committed to him for none of it. That is perfect. And we will absolutely be signing him. No trade clause for our Mia. Our Mia. We are free to trade him whenever the hell we want. So I will absolutely look to sign him. Let's say 1.7 over three years. That would be a tremendous contract for us. Sebastian Repo is an RFA. Probably won't fetch us much so I think I'll look to bring him back it's been pretty nice to see him develop what is he looking for two years at 1-5 I will absolutely do that question is though yet again if 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 he signs how much or how long will we have to stay committed to him even though with a two-year deal you probably wouldn't expect a no trade or a no move but still Repo, one year. Yeah, we're going to sign him, too. We are going to sign him, too. No doubt. So, again, he'll be in that Risto category of having to stay loyal to him for at least this next season. We'll try to bring him back. Brad Lambert's worth signing, obviously, but I might hold off for the moment. Uh, Manalainen. Hmm... I think we bring him back, too. Even if it's AHL caliber, he's looking for a two-way deal. Yeah, we bring him back. He could be a useful player still. Uh, Marcus Nurmi will look to bring back as well. Let's go one-year deal for the moment. No problem. Tulola we're going to drop for now. He'll probably be brought back to fill out the AHL. We'll let him go, though. Left wing is Hapala and Partanen. Or Partanen. We'll be letting both of them go for now. Again decent chance that they're both back to fill out the roster. And then at center, Virta and Kali Kosila. We're going to let both of them go as well. Again, decent chance that they're on the way back to fill out the roster. But for now, I want to make sure that we have plenty of spots to negotiate with just in case primarily there are prospects that make it into free agency, let alone superstars. Armia rejected. Uh, Manalainen accepted, Repo accepted, Kravinen accepted. So everybody but Armia. Which means I'll probably go three years at two mil. We'll still stick to the whole three years. Aside from that, we should be good. Yep, so one seven wasn't enough. Let's go up to two. I mean, three by two, that's still a very cheap deal for him. We will have $42 million in space, and I believe it would have been now 16 open spots to work with. So we're looking pretty good here. Armia still rejected. 
playing hardball. He's upset. He remembers when I overlooked him. He remembers when I Komarov'd him. Or we could call it... I mean, originally it was Gibsoning by ignoring him. 225 is still... A, like, unless we get up to, like, 3 million bucks, that's when it becomes a pretty rough deal, right? So, we're still okay for the moment. Will this go through? Oh, my God. I cannot believe he's still rejecting. That is insane. I'm going to sign him no matter what. But the more money he holds out for, the less we're going to get back for him in a trade. And the more it just becomes like, yeah, he's a player on our team. That's it. So this has to go through. Thank God. Even then, he just, like, I think he intentionally butchered his own trade value by holding out there. That's unfortunate. That's the, that's the counterbalance to him not having a no movement clause. We move on to free agency, however. Jack Hughes is a free agent. Tampa, what are you doing? Oh, my God. The Lightning absolutely botch it. Hughes, as a UFA, makes it because, of course, creative players, for some reason, don't end up as RFAs. That is insane. Goalie-wise, Thatcher Demko leads the way. Pekka Rene is up there for Finnish goaltenders. As far as prospects are concerned... We do not have anybody of concern for us, unfortunately. So odds are, I'll look to bring back Rene yet again. Unless there's somebody else here, Vili Husso. It's either Rene or Husso, and I don't think either will really have trade value. I mean, we might as well we might as well go for Rene. Corpisalo is still there. Yeah, we might as well try to bring back Pekka Rene. I mean, he was great last year, too. So, for Rene, he wants a two-year deal. I'll give it to him because I have a good feeling he's going to retire at the end of this. So, I'm willing to sign him to that two-year deal. So the good thing is, all we have to do is spin the wheel again. If I send this offer to Rene, we would have to be loyal for both years. But again, I think he would retire anyway. And we know that his trade value is pretty poor. I think I'm still going to offer him this deal, and if he accepts, then he is here until he retires, basically. So I'm going to go up to 225, and we'll hope he retires at the end of the year. Like I said, I mean, we can sign him, knowing that I wouldn't be allowed to trade him, right? It's like, okay, I could go with Huso, and we probably wouldn't apply a no-movement clause to him. Maybe we would. It's still worth it to sign, Rene. It still is. Defensively... Do we have any options? No, we don't. I mean, oh God, Strawman Swedish. Yeah, we're screwed. No great options there at all. Cernak is Czech or not Slovakian. Oh yeah, there's nobody. We'll end up randomly filling out the roster again in terms of prospects. It's not looking too good. Pilot Swedish. I don't think we have anybody. Yeah, wow. Mm, that's that's rough. It's going to be rough to fill out the roster. And then forward-wise, in terms of top-notch talents, there is nobody. Unfortunately, Bjorkstrand is Swede. Denmark, not even Swedish. She's from Denmark. Oh, boy. Just I'm trying to make sure here that we're that we're not missing anybody because I'll I'll get called out for it. I know. Solark, Stash, Need, Neil, Tambellini, Levo. Yeah, this is this is rough. Not a very good class for us, as especially when compared to last year. So we'll have to fill out the roster using mainly players that we let go of at the end of the season. Okay, any of these low elites want to somehow be Swedish? Damn it. There is, uh, there's nobody here for us, is there? Nope. Nobody at all. What about even for the medium nines, it's worth looking. Lamico's there. And let's be honest, he's probably someone we'd be looking to bring back anyway. So we'll offer him 
the max uh, ELC contract. Oscar Lindblom is Swedish. Walmart isn't available to us. Is there anybody? Jan Mysak, not quite a Mazak. Henriksen Doyle, yeah, it's a it's a brutal, brutal class for us, unfortunately. Haluka, Pagansky, uh, Tamela, Tamela. It's an RFA for the Lightning. Right, you know how much am I allowed to offer him? I think it's right about here. How much am I allowed to offer him before it's like, hey, you owe us a pick now? Because I'm pretty much going to offer him the max deal and see if we can steal him away from Tampa. I don't think I'd plan on trading him either. So, is it 1 4? 1 3 7 5. Perfect. So, we'll see if we can get him. Only three offers sent out, which is absolutely brutal. Let's move forward and see what happens. We get an offer for Charlie Coyle. I'll decline that, of course. Lamico has signed. Rene has signed. Tamala, Tamela has signed. And Tampa matched it. Okay, so we do bring in Rene and we bring back Yuho Lamico, which is not too bad of a move. We do have to fill out this roster, of course. Goaltending-wise, though, we are pretty much set. We have our five. Technically, we could look to bring in somebody else, but I think we're good with Laxo not needing to be signed defensively. Let's see, we have three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three, four, five, six with Honka. Seven, eight. Technically, I don't need to sign any more defensemen. We're good. We are absolutely good on that front. There might be some higher overalls, but I mean, when you look at you know, the caliber. There's going to be some decent defensemen in the AHL this upcoming season, too. So we're good on that front. Forward-wise, Lambert will be signed. So that is 9 on Jokinen. So let's see. 10, 11. Okay, yeah, we need forwards. We need the best forwards we can find. And we will end up signing Brad Lambert. I might as well just do it now to get it over with. So again, defensively, we're looking good. No problems there. Forward-wise, we are going to sign Lambert. And I think I'm going to leave Kipper unsigned for now. Again, 65 is a little bit low in terms of like, yeah, you'll do well in the AHL. So we'll leave him there for now. And I might just stay alive with this. It shouldn't take that long, I hope, to find forwards to help fill out that AHL roster. It shouldn't take all that long, I hope and pray. Terry Lekin is not eligible. Yes, he is. Alright. You are a UFA as well. I can't imagine I'm going to trade him. He doesn't have that much value to be honest, so we'll plan on keeping him. Eunice Donskoy, also eligible. Also looking for a one-year deal. And again, he's someone else who's not going to have that much trade value. I don't really feel the need to be like, eh, hey, spin the wheel for those two. I mean, come on. Again, they're not going to have any value. It's just helping us fill out the roster. Is there anybody else? Roussel, Verhage, Bunting. Auberg isn't available to us. Lindblom isn't available to us. Olafsson? Swedish. Makes sense. Zikoff's not there. Haluka. Ein, I believe, is Swedish as well. Uh, we should have one here, right? Nope. Oh, boy. <laughs> Never mind. It might be a little bit more difficult than I was hoping. Where are the Finns, man? I know I, like, I know I let go of a couple of people. There you go. Salamaki, you'll be back again. <laughs> How many times have I let go of Mika Salamaki already? We're heading into, what, season five? I, I've lost count of how many times we've let him go of him and brought him back. It's pretty hilarious. Lindholm, yeah, it's Par Lindholm. He's Swedish. Uh, Virta, 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 welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. That'll bring us up to 40. Let's try to sign two or three more, depending on how long it takes. And thankfully, it's not going to take that long. Good thing is the AHL roster should be pretty good yet again as they continue to improve with the influx of prospects. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Maxim, I mean, the Mammon. He's not available. Hannah Kynan. 
Absolutely is. We've had him on the roster a couple of times too, haven't we? Petrus Palmu. The Palmu. Sign him up. And one more? Ish? If we can find somebody? I'm going to give it another five seconds or so. Anybody at all? Maybe? Possibly? Potentially? It's not looking too good. Cali Casilla will bring you back. Why not? Duck's great. And we should be good. We should be all set. I'm really excited already to see how this team ends up progressing. Ooh. Ah, Swam Mail is not worth a second, though. I'm real I need to turn off the whole offers deal again. I'm never gonna accept an offer from an AI. It's so unlikely. I am really intrigued to see how this team progresses heading into next season. What kind of development do we see from some of these guys? I mean, hell, we've already seen a defenseman jump from medium six to high six. So, of course, you know, there might be other potential jumps. There might be some big overall jumps. You think of that defenseman whose name is escaping me right now because, my God, some of the Finnish names, they just blend together. But you think of that defenseman who went from like a 70 to an 81 throughout the course of last year. He went from, eh, we probably shouldn't sign him for the AHL to, my God, I wish I signed him for the NHL. It's just kind of, you know, it's just kind of how it happens, right? It's just how it goes down. I don't know how to explain it, but hopefully, hopefully, we do get some decent development here. I'm excited to see what happens. And I'm thinking that we're going to win the cup this year. I'm kidding, of course. Not a chance of that. But this might be the first year that we finish out of the bottom five. It really, it really, really does depend on the progression that we see here. But it could happen. Maybe. Possibly. Potentially. We'll find out. Let's see what we have here. What is the roster shaping up to be for this next season? Let's find out, goaltending-wise, right? Oh, my God! <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, no. Please retire at the end of this year. Holy shit. Also, I pray that we're not too far under the cap. I just realized we have $40 million in cap space. Oh, boy. Okay, thank God. No cap hits have readjusted. We need to go and sign two veterans to max contracts right now because if certain if certain contracts get readjusted on their own we're gonna have some god awful contract situations to deal with oh my god pecker Rene, what happened did he lose a leg like what happened kai congratulations you're gonna get a big time deal and that amazing goatee of yours. You look like a NASCAR. Like, you look like what a lot of people envision a NASCAR driver to look like. I'm not going to insult the sport of racing like that. But you get the point. Uh, yeah, we had yeah we had 34 or 39 million dollars available. We'll go for 34 million in contracts. I need to wait for those contracts to go through before I'm going to be allowed to adjust our roster. Anyway. Perfect. They both accepted immediately. They're like, I don't know if this is a typo or what, but I'm taking it. We made it. We made it. So let's see. Goaltending-wise, I mean, good God. Renee's still going to be the backup this year. I can't believe he dropped nine overall points. Oh, my God. Jesus. So mocking the Emmy and Justice will still be the one-two punch in the AHL. You know, I I might go see if we have a goalie available, and then it will at least be paying Pekka Rene. I cannot believe he dropped off like that. That is amazing. Let's see who we have available here, if anybody. Corpi Salo is there. Corpi Salo will be signed for the year. I need a little bit more of a reliable backup. Rene had a great year last year, but again, I can't trust that. Like I said, I mean, it might kind of screw us to have a better roster, but I do want to ice the best roster that we can. So, Rene, I mean, you'll get to sit in the press box. We're not going to send you down to the minors. I have more class than that. But, yeah, you are not going to be the backup. Not a chance. Defensively, not bad. Not bad at all. 
So Risto and Nudivara, Kervainen, Nokalainen, Heinola, and Loxanen. Good stuff. Good stuff, which means our AHL defense is going to be even better. This, this is coming together. This is coming together quite nicely. Offensively, I mean, Lambert's, is still, uh, Lambert's still on 80. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 with Virta. That's fine, too. It's not a great roster, but things are slowly but surely coming together for this organization, and I really like what I'm seeing. So if we look at what this roster is going to be this year, we could just go all out and have a Lambert, Simon Taval, Capocacco top line. Could go all out and just let the young guys go for it. A third line of Nermi, Salamaki, and Minalina. Minalina is the only center there, right? Yeah, he's got a 70 rating. So that's uh, that's a quick and easy change. And Donskoy, the... I think Virta is a two-way or a playmaker, right? He is. That's why he is there. Was Repo a two-way? He was. But he's also the best offensively. So, Armia was the only center there, right? And he's not. Ah. Let's go Armia, Lamico, Donskoy. Lekkinen, Virta, and Repo. Kako, Simon, Teval, Lambert. Not a terrible way to go, I'd say. Might as well just let the young guys go for it. And then, of course, defensively, still Nudivara and Risto. Kravainen at 20 is up to an 83. Again, low elite. It's such a good potential this year. The fifth round pick. Absolute monster next to our former first round pick, Petri Nokalainen, who's up to an 82. And then third pairing is Vili Heinola. Heinola, a second round pick. And Oscar Laxon in the Sabres pick. We're looking okay. It's not a terrible defense. And then goaltending wise, Ranta and Corpisalo. I like it. And then offensively down in the AHL, just to make sure we don't have anybody who is accidentally scratched, Anakina would be the first on the chopping block, I suppose. And I think we have a couple of guys that we're going to want to get into that lineup. Those two don't matter as much, but Twominen absolutely matters. Is he the only one? Yes, he is. So let me see if Hanakinen's the one guy who's absolutely worth taking out of the lineup. It's either him Coppinen or Calicasia. Let's see. Coppinen at 84 offensive awareness. Hanekinen's definitely more defensive. Because I want these other guys to be in for those potentials. Even though they aren't the best potentials, we still want them to be in. I think we're going to take out Hanekinen because he's not going to get any better. So Twominen is in. And I think we will leave this according to overalls rather than worrying about potentials and getting the best prospects the most amount of ice time. I think that's how we'll handle it. So we'll put Twominen on that side with Pistola and Nikonen. Third line is fairly straightforward with Sorela at center. And at least for the top six, we'll sort by potential. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> It just outright didn't matter. Okay, that works then. That works. Koivinen up top. I like it. Defensively as well. I got a feeling I'm going to like this quite a bit. Anthony Honka right now is the lowest rated. So we have Toskala, low elite, and medium seventh, Niskala. So let's take a look here. So it's going to have to be either Lavalainen or Renainen that get bumped, which sucks because they're both really good. But yeah, somebody has to get dropped because those other two might end up making... Uh, I end up making a big impact here. So unfortunately, it has to be Tarmo Reina. I think I said his name was Tomas earlier, but Tarmo Reina has to take a seat for Toscala, which is a pretty good sign. Unfortunately, he's someone that won't have any trade value whatsoever. So there's really not much we can do there in terms of like, ah, trade one of them. Like, nah, it's just, it's not going to happen, unfortunately. Uh, let's let's make that little change for the hell of it. And goaltending-wise, again, Makaniemi. And Justice Anunanuanuanuan. I like the way this organization, both the NHL and the AHL teams, are coming together. Again, we're probably going to be listed as rebuilders still. We absolutely are. That's fine, though. I feel really good about our team right now. And if we look to at trade values, I mean, they might not be the highest, right? I mean, goaltending wise, we have Laxa, who still has potential. We have Ranta from there. Early falls off. So obviously, there's. 
There's no trades to be made there. Defensively, though, with Risto, Nidivara, Kuka, Heinola, Nokalainen. I mean, look at that. Just that page in general. It's nuts. Not to mention Tirvainen, who should probably be in the AHL this year. That's a really good setup. It's a really good setup. And again, in terms of trade value, like, between Lavalainen and Renainen, like, that's a... I mean, Lavalainen has a bit more. Like, that's probably, like, a fourth at best. Which, in fairness, could be worth it. But I think I'd rather just leave them where they are right now. And then forward-wise, Kako, Simon Tavall, Lambert. That's the main core. With someone like Kiprasov on the outside, we still have Peelman and Twilminen. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Obviously, the defense is looking a little bit better right now than that forward core. But overall, we are on the right track. And something we haven't done since the first season or so, Capo Caco has been named captain by default. And I think I agree with that. If we were to have one person, I mean... It's either we give Kako the letter immediately or risk the Linens captain, right? I think that has to be the case. I think it has to be. Let me know what you think. It's a minor thing. But, I mean, if I were to sit here and uh, give players letters, you know, if I, if I were to do this, I think I would have Risto as captain. And then we have the two young guns, the main two leading the way, Simon Tyval and Kako as the alternates. Not a bad way to go for something that's totally meaningless in the grand scheme of things. I do want to see, though, why not, what our overall ratings are heading into this next season. The next episode, we will sim through the season and potentially get to the draft as well. 88, 91, and an 89. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. We're looking okay. All things considered. Guys, we are going to end this one here. Of course, we are We are uploading this a bit more consistently, having ended the uh, HUD series that we had ongoing, a set plan, although check that out if you haven't. It was, a, it was an okay series. There were some fun moments, some not fun moments too, but check that out if you haven't. With that series ending, or at least being on hiatus, I am going to be able to update this a lot more frequently, as uh, many of you have requested. So don't worry, more episodes are on the way. It won't be a week's wait for anything. Thank you for your support on this series, by the way. I'm glad you guys are as excited for this as I am. I think you made a pretty good choice with the Finnish players being the team that we focus on as opposed to any other nation. I'll see you in the next one. Our fifth season? I mean, it's 2022-2023 coming up. How good will we be? Are we going to be basement dwellers again? Probably. But for how much longer? <laughs>